My name is Neil Davis and I'm the founder of Digital Cloud Training. This video is an excerpt from our comprehensive training course for the AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner exam. Hi guys, in this section we're going to be covering the Identity and Access Management Service. IAM is a really important service which is used for creating users and roles and groups and logging into your AWS account. Now, this is going to be very much a theory-based section. And the reason being is because what I want to do is teach you some key facts before we then go into the next section where we're actually going to put those into action. Now, the next section is about creating a free tier account. And what we're going to do is create an account. We're going to create users, groups, roles, policies, enable multi-factor authentication and other security best practices for IAM. Now that section is an optional section. However, I highly recommend at the very least you watch along and see how we go through IAM and build these different components. Better still, if you'd like to, create your own free tier account following my guided instructions and you'll be able to use that account throughout the remainder of the course for all the labs and it will really help you gain a better understanding of AWS and really become a proper hands-on cloud practitioner. So what you have on your screen here are a few of the components of IAM. We can create user accounts. We can create groups and put users into those groups. We can create policy documents which describe what permissions we have or we assign those policy documents to users and to groups and to roles and the roles themselves are essentially security principles that can be used by services within AWS. And we'll see how those work later on. It's a little bit of a complex subject, so bear with me. We then have multi-factor authentication, and this is a way of adding an additional layer of security when you log in. And we have a section or a lesson directly on multi-factor authentication within this section, so you'll understand exactly what it is soon. We then have identity federation. So identity federation basically means that you're able to integrate an external directory. In most cases, that's going to be Microsoft Active Directory. So your company may have its own Microsoft Active Directory database. And if you're logging onto a Windows machine in a company, for instance, it's very likely that Windows machine is connected to Active Directory. And that's where your user account is stored. So you can integrate Active Directory into IAM. So you can use that same user account in your company to authenticate into AWS and access AWS resources. Now how that's done is gonna be beyond the scope of the Cloud Practitioner exam, but it's just good to know that that's possible. We then have what's called API keys. Now API keys are used for programmatic access. That means if you are trying to launch or configure a service on AWS using a command line or a software development kit, you would use an API key rather than a user account to authenticate. Now, it's, again, it's a little bit of a complex subject, but we're gonna cover that in some detail soon. So let's look at some of these core components of IAM. So first off, we have a user account. So a user account will be assigned to an individual or it can be assigned to a service, and we'll talk more about that later on but this could be your personal user account in IAM. And that's used then to log into AWS and access AWS services. And the way that we configure what that user is allowed to do within AWS is through creating an IAM policy document. And we can then attach that to the user. There's a couple of ways this can be done. Again, don't need to know that for now. We're gonna go into that and you'll see some examples of that in the course but you create a policy and you define what that user is allowed to do. Another way is you can create a group and you can put the user into the group and then you have a policy and you attach the policy to the group. Now, why would you wanna do this? Well, if you can imagine if you have thousands of users in your company who are accessing AWS, it's gonna become very difficult to attach policies and configure permissions directly on each user account. What's better is you break those users into groups and you say, well, maybe there's one group for developers, there's a group for system admins, there's a group for the operations team and so on. And you define what those groups of people are allowed to do in a policy document and put the users into the group. And that really eases administration. Another way that we can provide access to resources within IAM is through a role. And a role is another security identity. So similar to a user account, 
A role is an individual security entity, but it can be assumed by other entities. It's a bit of a complex subject, but that basically means that, for instance, if you launched an EC2 instance, a virtual server, you could assign a role to that virtual server, and that role would then have a policy attached to it which would allow that role to access something else. So, for instance, if that server needs to store data in a storage service such as S3, the policy could allow that EC2 instance to access S3 and store data there. And don't worry if this is a bit over your head at this stage, we're going to be using IAM roles in the course. You'll hear more about them and you'll, you'll also see them in action as well. So that's the really high level overview. What we're going to do now in the next lessons is drill down into users, groups, roles and policies and a few other attributes of IAM in a lot more detail. Thank you.